Hi, thank you for joining me. My name's Esther, but you might know me better as Mongoose Paints. If you follow me on Instagram, then you'll be familiar with my painting style. But a lot of you have asked if I would help you to start on your painting journey too. So in this series, I'll be showing you some of the materials I use and a few little tips and tricks to get you going. So you can see before you, you have some white, plain watercolour paper. If you can see it in the light, you, you'll be able to tell that this has got a, a texture to it. That means that the paint can really adhere to it. It's also a good idea to go for a relatively good quality watercolour paper, because obviously you're going to be making this very wet and you want it to be able to deal with the moisture well. It's another reason why I like the textured paper, because it really can absorb the water and, uh, and keeps a, a really beautiful finish to the painting. This watercolour paper is available in pretty much any size you can imagine. I have some A2 upstairs. Um, generally, I work on A4 or A3 at the most, but I do have some really cute A8 pieces, which are actually made of recycled cotton um, from India. I love these because they're just so quirky. And if you just want to do a quick sketch or a little watercolour study, then they make a really cute little keepsake. You can frame them or you can just uh, hole punch them, maybe put them put them on, a, on a, a key ring or something and create yourself a little uh, travel pad with those. The other thing that I quite like doing is using toned coloured watercolour paper. So this one, this particular one is grey. Now this is technically a mixed media pad, but it still has that slight texture that works well with watercolour. I also really like this with like an ink drawing on it and then giving it some pops of colour with ink or watercolour. I think the grey background makes for a really interesting composition. But you're not just limited to grey, you can also get it in all different colours. I quite like this tan one, which again is a mixed media pad, but it's still got the weight to it that means that it can cope with a lot of moisture. This one is hot press, which means that it's smooth. People like this if they're drawing things with their watercolour crayons or pencils because it gives a much smoother texture to the lines. Again, it's all personal preference, but I think that the coloured paper really gives you um, some fun to add into your paintings. Now obviously that's pretty much lim the limit with watercolour, but if you're moving on to acrylics or oils, you have even more choice. One of the things I like to work with is canvas. You might be more familiar with canvas that's already been stretched onto a frame, but I quite like working with unstretched canvas sheets. This means that I can paint things and cut them to any size I want. Um, also, if you do a bit wrong, it really doesn't matter because you've only used a sheet of, a sheet of paper, basically. And then you can pop them in a frame, you can mount them. They're really, really easy to give a nice finished product to your painting. The downside, obviously, is that they're floppy, so you really need to use them on a board or on a table. If you're out and about with your, uh, with your easel, one of the things I really like to use is a canvas board. They're thin, they don't take up as much room as a stretched canvas, but they've still got the durability of, uh, uh, of the strength there, which means you can just pop them on your easel and away you go. These, as you can see, have already been primed, so they're just ready to paint on straight away. And the thing I love about canvas is that you can really scrub into them and get lots of really interesting painting techniques with your brushes. Finally, it's my favourite thing to paint on with acrylics, and that's wood. This has not been primed, this is just a bare wood panel, so I would need to give this a coat of gesso uh, before I start painting. But the thing I love about wood is you get the natural grains come through. And I feel like that really adds to something, especially if you're painting uh, something, a natural feature like a landscape. I just think it's a really quirky little uh, added detail. I also love that because it's a, a block, you have this nice edge, which you can paint or you can leave bare. And it just gives a really nice finish to your painting that can just be hung straight on the wall like that. No need for framing. Well, I hope that's helped and I hope that that's given you uh, reason to go shopping <laughs> and uh, I hope that you enjoy seeing what you can paint on. Join me next week. Take care.